Hey there. So in this video, we're talking about chemical shift. That's the position of a signal along the x-axis measured in parts per million, or ppm. That indicates the resonance frequency for each type of nucleus. The chemical shift gives us an indication of the structural environment of the nucleus. For example, a proton, which is what we'll be talking about in this course. A proton with high electron density around it, close to a lot of electron donating groups, is termed shielded or surrounded by electron density. Shielded protons have signals with chemical shifts closer to zero ppm. Protons with lower electron density are termed deshielded, having electron density pulled away from them. The more deshielded a proton, the more its signal shifts to the left on the x-axis or closer to 10 or 12 ppm. So this is a table of typical proton chemical shifts. This table will be available to you on exams, uh, but I do recommend that you memorize certain parts or certain different types of chemical shifts. For example, it's a good idea to memorize that a proton on a carbon next to a carbonyl group comes around 2 to 2.5 ppm. Protons on a carbon bonded to an oxygen atom appears between 3 and 5 ppm. Aromatic protons appear between 6 and 9 aldehyde protons around 9 or 10, and carboxylic acid protons uh, will have signals around 10 to 12 ppm. It's important to know that this, you know, this chemical shift table, um, in fact, the chemical shifts can vary. The more electron withdrawing groups there are around uh, a carbon atom, the more that proton will actually be deshielded. The more electron density will be pulled away from it. So if there's another electron withdrawing group, um, like a chlorine on this carbon atom, uh, instead of the proton appearing around 2 to 2.5 ppm in the spectrum, it would appear further to the left. So while they are approximate, the table does give you a good estimate of where to find the different signals. The other key thing to, to know is that acidic protons have highly variable chemical shifts, and often they have quite rounded peaks. The next thing we're going to look at are the factors that affect chemical shift. There's five main factors to think about. So I've already mentioned electronegative atoms, or electron withdrawing substituents. They cause the observed nuclei to be deshielded. For example, a proton on a carbon next to a fluorine atom would come in around 4.3 ppm. A proton on a carbon next to an oxygen is around 3.5. Proton on a carbon next to a nitrogen atom, atom would be around 2.5. And we'd have a similar case with these electron withdrawing groups. So a proton on a carbon next to a nitro group being around 4, a proton on a carbon next to that electronegative uh, ester oxygen atom appearing uh, around 4 or even 4.5. So proton uh, on a carbon that's alpha to a carbonyl, so, which is not as strong of an electron withdrawing group, would have a chemical shift of around 2. So keep in mind, that most electron withdrawing groups increase the deshielding effect and move the signal farther and farther to the left. Electron donating groups cause the nearby nuclei to be shielded, either by resonance or by the chemical environment itself being rich. So remember that shielded means shifted to the right on the spectrum and more towards zero ppm. So unsaturated groups like alkenes and phenyl rings they act as strong electron withdrawing groups. They deshield the observed nucleus. And you'd see a full explanation of, of why that is and what causes the phenomenon that causes that effect in a third year course. So for example, a phenyl proton will appear around 7, an alkene proton appears at around 5, uh, and a proton in a completely saturated system has a chemical shift of about 1 ppm, just as a basis for comparison. As I mentioned before, acidic protons have highly variable chemical shifts and often quite wide and rounded peaks, so they can often be distinguished from other types just based on their shape. But it's not a rule. So resonance or delocalization is the last effect we're going to look at, and it's an important one. We've seen how resonance can affect chemical reactions and the stability of molecules. It can also affect chemical shifts. So if we look at this particular molecule, Protons at alkyl A are on carbon bounded to an oxygen atom that's part of, an, uh, of a lactone, an ester in a ring. Um, there's two protons that are on a carbon atom next to the alkene. And then there's protons of the alkene itself. So we can use a chemical shift table to estimate the chemical shift of each of these protons. So protons A um, would be represented by a signal around 4.2. 
uh, the most shielded protons would be protons B. So they're near, but not on, the electron withdrawing alkene. So they'd be just over 2 ppm. And the alkene protons will be represented by those two signals above and below 6 ppm. So now we need to draw the resonance structures uh, to determine which signal represents which proton of the alkene. So those resonance structures uh, tell us that the hybrid, that better representation, um, there's a partial positive on the carbon bound to proton C. That means lower electron density at C. Conversely, there's a partial negative on the carbon bound to proton D. So that means higher electron density or more shielded for that proton. So proton D gave rise to the signal around 5.8, more shielded. And proton C gave rise to the signal at 6.3, more D-shielded, or less electron density. So in summary, chemical shift gives us an indication of the chemical environment of a proton. Higher electron density means the nu a nucleus, such as a proton, is more shielded, and its signal will appear at a lower chemical shift. Lower electron density means the nucleus is more D-shielded, and its signal will appear at a higher chemical shift.